Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. In this video, we're gonna dive into how the show page works in Studio One version five. With the release of version five, we added a brand new page to Studio One Professional called the show page. This lets you take the tools that you used to produce your music and to use them in a live performance environment. Whether you're playing in a live stream or at a live show, the show page might become your new best friend. In this video, I'm gonna show you how the three different types of tracks or players as we call them in the show page work and how to set them up. When doing any live performance, you want nice low latency. So I'll be using the Quantum 2626 as my interface for this show demonstration. And as you can see, it gets very low latency, even at just the 64 sample device block size. So first things first, let's create a new show and we'll create an empty blank show called Awesome Show and we'll set it at 44.1. Let's do it. Now when you first open the show page, it looks a little bit like a hybrid between the song page and the project page in Studio One. Over here on the left hand side, this is our set list. This is where we add in what we call set list items or just songs for your show. So if you're gonna do a seven song show, you'll have seven set list items here. You'll see that they create these little blocks up here on the top, and here's our timeline. If they're each five minutes, we've got a 35 minute show in the works. Now, where does the actual music and audio happen? That happens on the players or tracks inside of the show page. So the first one I wanna show you is the backing track player, and we're gonna call that tracks and make it red, because that's the color of tracks and we will send it out our main output. Now when that shows up, you'll notice these columns have been extended down and there's basically seven different boxes or blobs here for our tracks section. And if we hit F3, just like in our, in our song page in Studio One, we'll open up a window where we can add plugins, sends, there's a main output just like you would expect. There's two ways to add backing tracks into your song. First is just grab a WAV file and drag it in. You'll notice the waveform shows up here, and you can have different backing tracks, of course, for each set list item in the song. And what's great, the song, the set list item adjusts itself to the length of the backing tracks, because each of these songs are different lengths. And as you would expect, you select anywhere in the song and hit play, and you will hear music. The second way to add backing tracks into your session is to actually open up a song that you've worked on in Studio One and you can export it directly from the song. Let me show you. All right, this is the finished mix session from my song, Fighter. And you may be wondering, well, why bother opening up the song page when you can just take WAV files and drag them in? Well, here's a scenario. Let's say I wanna play an online live stream show tonight and I wanna play along to the backing tracks for this song. Well, I don't need the vocal tracks, right? Because I'm going to sing along. And then I'm going to play electric guitar, so I don't really want any of these electrics as well. So I can mute those out, and then I can bounce down this specific mix into the show page. To do that, I just select Song, Add to Show, select the show I'm working on, and Studio One automatically renders that out and places it in the show page. Okay, let's take a look at what changed in our show page. We'll notice we now have eight set list items. The song that I just exported, it created a new set list item with the name of the song. And as we can see over here, it added the backing tracks here. Let's take a listen. Yeah, that's the song, minus electric guitar, minus lead vocal. Perfect, now I can sing along to that. Now that we have backing tracks, I wanna play my electric guitar through the Empire plugin. How do we do that? Well, first we create what we've called a real instrument player. <laughs> I'm a real boy, called electric. And we will color this one, you know, a nice pretty green because that's the color of electric. I'll set the input to input one on my quantum and the output will go to the main output. Let's go with this Empire 2020 preset. I just drop it onto the channel and it pulls up everything from that preset. As you can see here, ready to go and rock out. But let's plug in a guitar just to be sure. Okay, sounds pretty good. Now, if you don't have any presets over on the side in your browser, you can do one of two things. You can press F3, open up the mixer, and just build out your own preset. 
to your liking, that's totally fine. Or if you've built out a really cool sound somewhere else in a song file, you can actually copy those settings right over to the show page and it's really easy, let me show you. Without closing down the show page, I can simply hit the start page, navigate to the session we wanna find, come over here and right click somewhere on the channel and choose copy channel settings. Go back to the show page, right click on the guitar channel and choose paste channel settings. Just like that, we've copied those settings over into our show page. Now let's talk about patches. There's a good chance you don't want the exact same guitar tone for the entire show. You may want one with more ambience, one with a delay, one with a different distortion. You can do all of that and program it into the show page using patches. Those patches can be found here. So here's our electric guitar player. And for each song or each set list item, there's a drop down menu right here. Right now, I don't have any options. I can mute the guitar for that song, which is helpful, but I don't really have anything else. How do I add, for example, this current sound that I have to this song? Well, it's actually pretty easy. If you come over here to this plus sign, you'll see when you hover over it, it says save patch. So if I hit that, I can call this trim verb because it has tremolo and reverb on it. Now, when I look into this drop down here, that becomes one of my options, trim verb. So let's say then I want to use that Joe Gilder Empire 2020 as my set or my sound for the second song. Well, I drag it onto the channel. That's now what we're hearing. And then I can, let's make sure that's what we're hearing first. Yes, that's the sound. I want to now create a patch for that. So I hit add patch and we'll just call that Empire 2020. That's great. And now I will pull down the pull down for song number two and choose Empire 2020. Now let's say I wanna use my dotted eighth guitar on song three. I just drag that onto the channel. Now we can hear the dotted eighth tone. Great, I have tone, you know the routine, hit plus. We'll call it dotted. And now it shows up as an option as well. We can have as many patches as we need, one per song if we want to, and we can go into any song and change those patches as much as we want. Also, because this is Studio One, we can apply just about everything we've done to key commands so we can quickly add and save patches without having to even reach for the mouse. So what exactly is happening with these patches? Studio One is literally changing all the plugins from one patch to the next. So right now, as you can see, we're in the middle of the first song. As the timeline moves into song two, Check what happens, the plugins changed on this guitar track. And then again on song three, changed again. It's changing on the fly from one song to the next. So as this first song ends, here's the tone I have right now. And then as soon as the timeline crosses over to this next song, I have a different tone. And then that song's over and it crosses over into song three. Three different songs, three different tones. Love that. Okay, we've talked about real instruments. What about virtual instruments? They're actually even easier to set up. Click the plus sign here and we'll add the virtual instrument playa. We'll call that keys. It's gonna be orange because that's the official color of keyboards. I'm sorry if you disagree, uh, but it's just the way it is. We can even choose what instrument in our instrument library, what plugin to load, or we can just say none and load a blank instrument. We can also choose our input. For me, I'll be using that ancient motif over there as my USB controller, but we can have different controllers for different tracks, which is pretty cool. If you have two keyboard players playing two different keyboards, they can be triggering two completely different players with different sounds. It can get pretty complex if you want it to. Now, just like we did with the audio track, we can do the same thing with the instrument track. I find an instrument preset that I want. Let's go with this Wurlitzer full tremolo patch and it loads it up actually into this patch on this particular song. So as soon as we get to this song and I start playing my keyboard, we hear this. Just like that, we got a cool sound. As you can imagine, we can have different patches for different songs. The next song needs to be a nice full piano. So I just load in the Persona Studio Grand, which is a killer set of piano samples. Now the great thing about the way Studio One handles that under the hood is it actually opens up different instances of our presence plugin. 
because just those two samples, the Wurlitzer is 80 megabytes of samples, but that piano is a 500 megabyte sample. So rather than trying to load that in real time when you go from song seven to song eight, it actually has it loaded, ready to go, and all it does when we go from one song to the next is just switch over to which instrument it's triggering. Really efficient, really fast, works flawlessly. Here's one song. Here's the next song. And I know some people will ask, how was I changing that? I'm just clicking the timeline into each song because each of these songs is placed somewhere on the timeline. Now, a big question people will ask, what if I don't use backing tracks? How do I trigger different sounds for different songs? Great question. There's actually keyboard shortcuts you can use to trigger set list item one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can assign those to keyboard commands or to even MIDI commands on your controller or something like the Atom, like I said before, where you can say, okay, it's time for song two, you go bonk, and it moves the playhead to song two, and then it, change, it makes all the changes that you want it to have. You don't have to have backing tracks to still use this to change patches from one song to the next. And yes, if you wanna layer multiple keyboard parts together, just create two virtual instrument players, have them both triggered by the same MIDI controller, and then you can save and fire off different patches for each. You can even control them with the faders in the mixer if you wanna control the blend between the two. Hopefully you can see how I'm only scratching the surface of what you can do in the show page. Uh, I like to use it a lot of times just for practicing. I'll have a bunch of different patches pulled up on different set list items, and I can quickly change between different tones or even different instruments depending on what I'm trying to do. If you wanna add more flexibility when you're using it for a live performance, you can have multiple backing track players where the drums, bass, and guitars are on their own tracks with their own set of plugins so you can have more control over how you mix them for the show. You can have multiple real instrument players. I already showed you how to do a guitar, but you could do the exact same thing with a nice vocal mic going through a killer vocal chain, perhaps even the exact vocal chain that you used on the album version of the song, and now that's a part of your live stream sound as well. And of course, you can go nuts with MIDI having multiple instruments triggered by multiple different MIDI controllers. And the only limitation there is how much your computer can handle when it comes to running lots of instruments. The show page is one of many reasons to check out Studio One Professional. You can get started today by joining Persona Sphere for less than 15 bucks a month. However you want to do it, there's links in the description to tell you how. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Shring. Meow. Whoop.